The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Does the Lord require for praise and offering? What sacrifice, desire, or tribute bid you bring? Do justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Rulers of earth, give ye should you not justice know? Will God your pleading hear while crime and cruelty grow? Do justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. All who gain wealth by trade, for whom the world Think not to win God's aid if greed your commerce soils. Do justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. How shall our life fulfill God's law so hard and high? Let Christ endue our will with grace to fortify. Then justly in mercy we'll humbly walk with God. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant. To you O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. 
Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. I remember... Oops! Let's start, start, remember again. Ready, and... Remember, O oh Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love. And for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant. From 1 Peter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and forty nights you were fasting in the wild forty days and forty nights tempted and yet undefiled burning heat throughout the day bitter cold when light had fled Prowling beasts around your way, stones your pillow, earth your bed. Shall not we your trials share, learn your discipline of will, and with you by fast and prayer wrestle? to conquered be our God, give to us the victor's joy. Savior, may we 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe the good news the Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, in 2007, a year that now seems like a lifetime to go, for me, 2007 was BC, before children. In that year, I went to Las Vegas with friends. And I learned that if you don't gamble, Vegas is a relatively cheap vacation. Our one big splurge was joining a tour bus group to go see the Grand Canyon. And we traveled there through the Mojave Desert. I've never been to a desert before, and I enjoyed the sights. Joshua trees, houses for sale that cost $25,000. The catch is you have to bring your own water. And we even saw a few wild horses. But it was a scary journey in other ways. Our tour guide warned us back in Vegas that if we had to go to the washroom, we'd get or better go before boarding because once we entered the desert, his bus would not be stopping. The area we were driving through in western Arizona had 10 kinds of scorpions and more kinds of tarantulas. And it was, for sure, a desolate landscape. I remember laughing out loud at one point when we drove through the one and only town, a place called Nothing. Literally, we drove through Nothing, Arizona, population four. In today's Gospel reading, we're told that the Holy Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness, into a kind of desert. But he didn't go there in the relative comfort of a bus. He was on his own. And it was a dangerous place, as Mark makes plain. Jesus was with the wild beasts. So Jesus is facing physical danger, but as the people of Jesus' time and place would have well understood, he is facing spiritual danger, too. Jesus spends 40 days in the wilderness, but when the people of Israel were freed from slavery in Egypt, they spent 40 years there, and the stark conditions caused the people to curse both Moses and God. Spiritual danger. Eventually, they gave up on God altogether and began to make and worship idols, bowing down to a golden calf. So just as the Israelites went through a time in the desert before entering the Promised Land, so Jesus, before he proclaims God's kingdom has come near, does wilderness time too. Now I don't know why it happened that way, but most people have experienced this dynamic of putting in a hard time before enjoying the good times. Before a baby is born, there's labor, before a graduation ceremony, there's an exam. And both our Old Testament reading and our epistle today uh, talked about Noah's story. And from that, we remember that before there's a rainbow, there's rain. We even have that saying, it's always darkest before the dawn. So I don't know why the Holy Spirit sends Jesus into the wilderness 
or why it's like this in, in life so much of the time. But on this first Sunday in Lent, let's reflect for a moment on the benefits that Jesus' wilderness time brought about. I want to focus on two benefits, both of which can help us as we begin this holy season. First, the fact that Jesus undergoes suffering even before he begins to preach means that he preaches and teaches as one who understands and has empathy for the suffering of others. This passage comes from Mark chapter 1. Yes, we are still in Mark chapter 1. And in Mark's gospel, Jesus speaks not one word until his 40 days in the wilderness are over. The first words out of his mouth are, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The time is fulfilled. Jesus has been baptized. He has been named uh, by that dove that alights on him as the son of God. And he has now done his wilderness time. He is ready to begin his mission. But he would not have been ready if any of those puzzle pieces had been missing. And so the wilderness, as much as his baptism, matters. It was part of his preparation. Sometimes we think that Jesus' suffering only happened on the cross, but well before Good Friday, he was with the wild beasts. Jesus was in danger, really, from before he was even born. His mother Mary was vulnerable to being stoned to death. He was born in less than sanitary conditions. And then King Herod put a hit on him, tried to kill him. The wilderness reminds us that Jesus, God with us, went through what human beings go through. He was fully human, and even before the cross, he dealt with danger, with rejection, hunger, fear, and exhaustion. He even questioned the will of God at one point. And so Jesus was not a savior who walked six inches above the dirt and turned his head away from misery. No, Jesus entered our world, our world fully, and because of that, we can enter into a meaningful relationship with him. Jesus was with us and for us from the beginning, not only in his death, but in his life too. Years ago when the TV show MASH was still on the air, there was an episode in which Father Mulcahy, the MASH unit priest and chaplain, tried to comfort a wounded soldier. The soldier had been severely traumatized by what he had seen on the front lines. He is badly in need of that comfort, but when he learns that Father Mulcahy has never been on the front lines of battle himself, he refuses to talk to him. And he tells the gentle priest that he has no interest in hearing pious platitudes from a man who has not been where he has been, from a man who has no idea what he's talking about. And later in that same episode, Father Mulcahy does come under enemy fire. He is even forced to perform an emergency medical procedure on another while shells explode all around him. And after that, the traumatized soldier agrees to talk. Now they have a common frame of reference. Now Father Mulcahy gets it. And just so, whatever you or I or others in our world are going through, Jesus gets it. And that makes a huge difference. So the first benefit of the Spirit driving Jesus into the wilderness is that it is a powerful example and a powerful lived experience of God with us. The second one I want to touch on is that this shows us that although Jesus suffered, his suffering never ate him up completely. He went into the wilderness, he was with the wild beasts, but then he came out of the wilderness. He was rejected by his people, his own people in his own hometown of Nazareth, but then he found a welcome among the outcasts and sinners. Even his cross was swallowed up in victory and his grave became the place of new and eternal life. In Lent and always, we who seek to follow him can be confident that our own hardships 
will not be the end of us. That's the comforting part. But let's also not be surprised when the Spirit drives us into the wilderness places of our lives. Really far from being surprised at this, we should probably expect the Spirit to do so. We should expect that the Spirit will lead us into places of great brokenness, chaos, and hurt. Because that is where Jesus went, and we can't find healing for those places unless we go to those places, the places of hurt both in ourselves and in others. But we do not go to those hard places alone, and we do not go to them powerless. Jesus did not get driven out into the wilderness until he was baptized and until he was proclaimed beloved by God. And Mark the Gospel writer tells us that even though Jesus was with the wild beasts, he was also waited on by angels. It reminds me of Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was in danger, but he was also in the company of the angel of the Lord. And because of that, he was not destroyed. God is with us too, in the fire and in the desert and in the danger. And let's not forget that the desert journey is not the end. I got off that bus that went through the Mojave Desert and I beheld the glory and the grandeur of the Grand Canyon. Jesus always came out the other side, ready to proclaim God's kingdom and serve the people and live life in all its abundance. And as we say yes to him, and as we follow in his way, so will we. Wilderness time is tough. There's no denying that. But by faith we proclaim, God is with us. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Yes. For peace in the world, that the spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among the nations and people. May we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may relieve the protected, we pray to the Lord. For all whom we've injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. <laughs>